cloudy skies and drizzle in Portland today. Showers will get heavier this afternoon with more of the same expected tomorrow. Traffic's a real mess out there this morning. There's a crash on Have I you ever been now. driving down some remote stretch of Oregon Highway and wondered, how am I picking up a radio station in Portland? So you've got a chainsaw? You take got a chainsaw, yeah. Compass, I've got yes. a compass, GPS. More than likely, it's because of these guys. I think we're good to go. They're OPB broadcast engineers, and they keep the system's 84 transmitters, translators, and relay sites working. All the signals start at the OPB studios in Portland. A fiber optic network carries the signal down the valley to Corvallis and Winston to serve Western Oregon, or to Bend and through the Gorge to serve Central Oregon, or all the way to LeGrand to serve the eastern part of the state. At the end of each fiber optic line, the signals beam out and are bounced from mountaintop to mountaintop to cover just about every corner of the state. Quite a bit of driving involved in this job. Uh, you know, we might have to drive 100 miles, we might have to drive almost 200 miles uh, just to get to a site. Max Culbertson looks after the central region, which stretches from the Columbia River all the way to the California border. Once we get to the site access point from the highway, they're dirt roads typically, uh, sometimes they're pretty much boulder crawling. That's the case here at Table Rock, which serves Silver Lake and Christmas Valley. You never know what you're going to run into when you get to these sites after a long winter, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> Hey, Max, you've got the safety ropes, right? I do. They're back here. You got everything snug? Yep. OK. Looks right. like you're ready to go. So today, we're climbing up the tower and inspecting all of the connections. We're also doing a visual inspection of the tower members, um, you know, how that if, if anything's bent or damaged or anything like that. So do the uh, transmission line hangers look like they're in good shape? Yeah, they look like they're in pretty good shape. OK. You do have a bent member here on this tower. You see that? Uh, no, I didn't. So this one right here, this diagonal is bent a little bit. Might have got stressed out somehow with wind and ice or something, but the rest of the tower looks fine. We're certified climbers. I enjoy it. On a nice day, it is beautiful up there. You're standing on the top. You're looking down, and it's just gorgeous panorama all around you. But at other times, it's nasty, snowy, blowing, so it can be a challenge. Wintertime and the snow and ice that come with it bring a whole different set of challenges. He's leaking some fluid. Like it did on this day, on the way up to Mount Fanny near Le Grand. Can you see the puddle down there, Raj? Yeah. It's right there. Yeah, it's certainly leaking. Mount Fanny is probably the most difficult mountain in the entire OPB system. She takes her toll on men and machines. All right, there we go. Luckily, these men are engineers. You almost have to be a jack of all trades to be a broadcast engineer these days, especially in an environment like this. And you got to know your way around a snowcat. Yeah. Everybody's fingers and everything out of the way. The cat is fixed. But engineering skills only go so far. Today is a lucky day, because we get so many that are not anywhere near this. Sometimes the cloud cover is so thick you can only see a few car lengths ahead of you. We've been up here with snow and rain, lightning, thunder, and on those nasty days, we always are prepared to hike out. At 7,136 feet, Mount Fanning is home to several broadcasters. And all that hardware is housed in this little green shack here. So Mount Fanny is a hub, and we spoke out to all kinds of other places like Enterprise and Joseph over in Wallowa County. There's a TV and a radio station in Ontario that we feed from right here. We feed uh, KOBK in uh, Baker City. There are likely to be one to 200,000 viewers and listeners, depending on OPB coming through all the equipment here on top of Mount Fanny. So what happens to the signal in those few seconds between the transmitter in Portland and your TV in LeGrand? In between those two pieces of equipment are lots of little boxes. And when something goes wrong, it's usually one of those boxes messed up or completely broke. So a lot of times our task is to find out which box broke so that we can get it fixed or replaced. Today, one of the TV boxes has gone blank. 
This is our link back to headquarters to let them know that we're on the air out here. Sometimes this little tiny box loses its marbles, so they see a black screen and they're panicked, calling us saying, are you guys on the air? In this case, a simple reboot and a few minor tweaks and things are running smoothly again. Well, almost. Hey Steve, I just got a call today that says Channel 8's off the air. I had just walked out and closed and locked the main door and here comes a radio call. Yeah, copy that. We're still on top of the mountain. I'll take a quick look and report back. One of the other broadcasters on the mountain has gone off the air. Mount Fanny is a very difficult place for anybody to come up here. So while we're here, we'll make sure that uh, we try to get them back on the air if we can. And they do the same thing for us, too. I hit the reset button there, that reset okay. one, but that doesn't seem to have changed anything. We don't have time for it today. Yeah. we well, got to get off a mountain. With daylight fading and no easy fix at hand, Steve will take the broken box 32 miles to Legrand for repair. Okay. But what if something goes wrong at a really isolated site? Cox Mountain is primarily a microwave repeater site that takes a signal from Glass Butte and then shoots down into Lakeview. But it also has some listeners over some mountainous terrain and down in a bowl that can, amazingly enough, receive our radio signals. And we rely on viewers and listeners in these small rural towns to call in and let us know that we're off the air. And when it goes down, if it's down for five minutes, I'm getting a phone call from Cam Newton. My name is Cam Newton. I live in Lake County, Oregon, in the Warner Mountains. There ain't nobody but us chickens around here. Our nearest neighbor is uh, five, six miles away. We have the mountains with all the forests and the creeks and the lakes. A quick news update now on OPB. For Christine and I, it is paradise. And, and, diplomatic relations has allowed and we can live remote uh, because we have connection to the world through OPB. When the signal goes down, Max is on it, and he's had some amazing adventures trying to get the signal back. I call Cox Mountain my Moby Dick. It, has tried to kill me on a number of occasions. The snowpack is usually around six feet deep on average, but the wind is very strong and it will drift the snow as high as 40 feet. I've had incidents where I thought I had stable snow and ended up screaming down the hill and it can get your adrenaline going. <laughs> it can make you grip a little tighter. <laughs> a lot of people come up to us and thank us for the job that we do. A lot of these rural communities don't really have access to cable or, you know, they're just too expensive. Um, and so, yeah, it's an important job, in my opinion, to, to be out there serving these communities. If I couldn't get OPB radio, we would have thought seriously about moving here. It's true. <laughs> Coming in from Vancouver, both I-205 and I-5 are slow in the usual places. But Portland traffic. I don't need to know this stuff. I don't want to hear about it. I'm living here, so I don't have to hear about it. minute delay on those routes into downtown Portland. Great people just doing their thing in their own Northwesty way. We love bringing you stories like this. Support what you love. opb.org slash video.